Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 691. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the Flight to Safety ETF. Now, We've been having a pretty rough correction so far this year, and a lot of people are wondering, is there some place to wait this out or to hide or to have less exposure than a 100% equity portfolio? Well, the answer is yes. You don't have to have all of your money in stocks, and you do want to have some of your money in other things. The problem has been with The bond market is that interest rates are so low that it's been rather challenging to include those in your portfolio because they haven't given much return. However, since interest rates have gone down so dramatically, they actually have given a lot of return because these are crazy times and seeing a half a point reduction by the Federal Reserve and bringing interest rates to near zero Well, the effect has actually been to boost the value of the bonds, and that's highly unusual since, again, we are near zero interest rates, but that's what happens when rates go down, bond valuations go up. So bonds have actually gotten a boost during this time. Having said that, I don't think it's where you really want to be to put a significant amount of your portfolio in bonds. Because with interest rates near zero, at some point, interest rates will reverse and start going up. It may not be this year. It may be next year or possibly even the year after. Who knows? But at some point, interest rates will start to turn and will have a large move up to make to get back to just where normal interest rates are around 6 7 8% where they've been historically. That hopefully someday we'll get back to. But what that means for bonds is that when interest rates rise, bond valuations decline. So while you might have some portion of your portfolio in bonds, and that might be a winning strategy right now, for the long term, I don't think that's a winning strategy because at some point interest rates are going to go up and that's going to not be good for bonds. So what can you do? Well, there might be a solution where you can mix some items in with your equity portfolio and you can have a little bit of the best of both worlds. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a brand new ETF that just came out February 5th and it's called the Flight to Safety ETF. Now, I'm not getting paid for this. Nobody asked me to talk about it. I just happened to read about it in Investor's Business Daily, and thought that this would be something interesting to bring up on the podcast. So what this portfolio does is it does invest in bonds that have a maturity of longer than 20 years, which means they are very volatile. They are very sensitive to interest rates. And as interest rates go down, they will increase bond valuations. But in addition to bonds, it also has utilities in the portfolio. Those are energy companies, just like you pay your utility bill every month. All kinds of power companies are in this portfolio, as well as gold. Now, why those three things in this portfolio? Because they have a low correlation to one another. In other words, they don't often move in the same direction at the same time. But yet, they are also places where you can have a little bit of a flight to safety, meaning you don't have exposure to the volatility in a total stock portfolio, and you have things that actually can do well when the market declines. 
So it is something you could consider putting a portion of your portfolio in. I would not go completely out of stocks into this portfolio by any means. And certainly you don't wanna be panicking and selling stocks because we are at some point going to get some very nice rebounds and I think go on to new highs this year. So while we wait it out, there is something that you can add to your portfolio in a small slice perhaps that may not move with the rest of the market and may give you a bit of a positive return while the stock market continues to find its footing and find where it's going to finally bottom before it can start rebounding. Again, you don't wanna to try to time the stock market. You want to make your investments and keep those investments. But I know some of you are wondering if there isn't some way to diversify your portfolio with some things that could provide a little bit of safety, could provide a little bit of return when stocks decline. And this is that kind of ETF to do that. Because it's an ETF, we know that the fees within the ETF are very low. It's a 0.4% expense ratio. It's made up of 44.91% 20-year and longer U.S. Treasury bonds in maturity, 32.71% in U.S. large and mid-cap utility companies, so the largest of the large and also to the medium-sized power companies, utility companies, and then 22.38% in gold bullion. So this is in gold the metal, not gold stocks, like we have with GDX and GDXJ. So this would be the commodity price of gold. And because that is typically the most volatile of those three investments, they have the least position in the gold bullion. The Flight to Safety ETF, the symbol is FLYT. It was launched on February 5th. It's up 5.99% while the major indexes, S&P 500, the Dow Industrials, and the NASDAQ are down more than 8%. A little bit of commentary about the fund. They say the ETF industry is highly competitive. The largest providers continue to gain share. Even so, I think there are opportunities for some unique offerings, said David Mazza, Managing Director and Head of Product at Direction. Mazza, who's been at the firm since late 2018, has extensive experience with ETFs at State Street Global Advisors and Oppenheimer Funds. His team has been at the forefront of developing novel long-term strategies at Direction. As a result of these efforts, the firm launched early this year three strategic weight ETFs geared toward long-term buy and hold investors. These funds help investors with strategies that go beyond cap-weighted indexing. They focus on factors such as higher income, lower volatility, excess returns, and more diversification. And it goes on to say, while the New York firm is mostly known for its ETFs for short-term traders, it's increasingly adding products to its portfolio that cater to longer-term investors. The reason behind this is the changing market environment and demand for strategies that can more precisely capture investor views. Yeah, so flight to safety is something that looks interesting. Again, I wouldn't be putting a huge amount of money in there, but if you want to use it as one of your sector investments, five to 10% or so of your portfolio might be suitable. Check with your financial advisor. Know that this is a brand new portfolio, so it does not have a track record. There's nothing to really judge this on, so invest at your own risk and realize that nothing's perfect. Nothing is going to go up all the time when the market goes down. But here's what I do know. We have another half a percent cut priced in from the Federal Reserve. So it looks like on their next meeting, March 18th, we may be seeing another half a point cut by the Fed. In addition to that, gold looks very poised to go higher. That's one of the reasons why we own the gold mining shares. And utilities are a good, solid, all-weather investment because people have to pay their utility bills no matter what else is happening. So they tend to be a very steady, stable, lower risk type investment. And that's why these three combined are a very powerful ETF. 
Now, I will say that the risk with this long term is, again, when interest rates start rising, that is going to decrease the bond portion of this portfolio. But since we just had rates cut a half a percent and it looks like we're going to go down another half a percent and have rates at zero or possibly even negative, these are unusual times and this is going to be working in this strategy if we see interest rates decline further. But should interest rates turn around, shoot up, or have any kind of bottoming and sustained rising as the economy recovers, that part of the portfolio will not do well. So just understand, as long as interest rates are declining, the bond portion of this portfolio will likely do well. But should interest rates change and start to rise, that is going to provide a negative drag on that portion of the portfolio. So I just want to be really clear about that. You have to understand what makes certain investments go up and what makes them go down. Just like I always talk about earnings are what make the stock market go up and profitability, interest rates are what drive the bond market up and down. Because we're in these unprecedented times where interest rates are almost at nothing and we have interest rates around the world at zero or negative interest rates, these are really unchartered waters. We've never been in a situation like this in history. So understand that at some point, interest rates will start going back up. And when they do, it might happen pretty quickly. So that is one of the risks that you have by having any kind of a bond portfolio or any kind of bond holdings in your portfolio is that when interest rates do start to rise quickly, that will cause the value of the bonds to drop. So I see this a little bit more like a short-term hiding place, if you will. I don't see it as something to put in your portfolio and forget about. I definitely think that because we are at this all-time historic low place for interest rates, there is some risk in there in the longer term. So for the short term, this might be something to consider, but longer term, I'm still sticking with stocks longer term because to get our higher compounding rates, we have to stick with the stock portfolio. That's what's going to get us the 10% long-term rates of return that we're looking for in our portfolio. Even with the pullback this year, I'm still anticipating by the end of this year to be in double digit positive territory. Of course, there's no guarantee, but I really think there's a lot of things baked into the economy that haven't kicked in yet that in the second half are going to bring us up and bring us out of this slump. So I wouldn't be making a lot of changes in the portfolio. This is just something to bring to your attention since it's new. And many of you have asked me what does well during these times when it seems like it's difficult to find a place to wait out any of the downturn in the stock market. If you enjoy the podcast and you'd like to get even more of what I have to say about the market, I do make frequent posts on my Instagram page at Linda P. Jones and also at Be Wealthy and Smart, two different accounts I have on Instagram. You can join me there or if you're on Facebook at Linda P. Jones fan page. And check out the whole wealth mentoring library at lindapjones.com forward slash podcast. There's literally topics of everything you can think of on my podcast page. And it's a wealth of knowledge to help you get to financial freedom faster. And we're in the final days of our review giveaway. Don't forget, there's 25 things I'm giving away. 10 of my Wealthy Mindset audio sets, valued at $197. 10 of my You're Already a Wealth Heiress books, named to the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority. And five one-on-one wealth mentoring sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on iTunes if you have an Apple phone. That will get your name in the drawing one time. If you have an Android phone, please leave your review at stitcher.com on my Be Wealthy and Smart page. It's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. Just search for Be Wealthy and Smart and you can leave a review there. 
And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book and leave a review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. And winners will be announced in mid-March. So we're coming right up on that. And you've got a really good shot of winning one of those prizes. And thank you so much to people who have left reviews. I so value hearing what you have to say and love that you love the podcast and are putting it into practice and getting great results. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.